So today I'm going to demo one of the cooler features of CowScout and that is the picklist manager. And what the picklist manager is, is it is a way for your team to create and organize picklists for each event that you're attending. It does everything from helping facilitate picklist creation to organizing your picklist so that way you can, for example, create as many picklists as you want per an event, depending on different situations your team may be in, come align selections. And also each pick list is private, so it can't be shared or viewed by other teams, so there's no need to worry about, well, now I have my pick list floating, floating out on the internet, and someone else is going to find it and read it and know who I want to pick. To begin using the pick list manager, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Newton division, because that's a division I already have a lot of scouting data for. I'm going to go to the bottom, and you'll see the section called pick list. And you'll see that I have an option to create a new pick list or select a pick list that I've already begun to create. So... What I'm going to do is start by creating a pick list. And one of the reasons why the pick list manager is really useful is because it helps teams facilitate the conversation to help them create a pick list. When we talk to teams, we notice that a lot of them struggled with where do you even begin? When you have your scouting data, you have your team list, but how do you, how do you even begin to build a pick list? So what we wanted to do is kind of break down the process step by step and provide an easy way for teams to make their own pick list. So the first thing that you do is you name the pick list. So in this case, we'll call it pick list. Uh, let's call it Newton pick list one. And the next thing it wants you to do is select the teams to exclude from your pick list. So essentially what you're doing is you're creating your do not pick list. And the reason why we have you do this is because for one, if you're at a 60 team event, only 24 teams are going to be playing the elimination rounds. So instead, what we want you to do is to select the teams that you just don't even want to factor into your pick list. Um, this actually helps the second stage, which we'll go through later, uh, it helps speed that process up a little bit. The other thing it does is, for example, I'm on 1538. I don't need to include myself in my own pick list because I don't, I'm not going to be picking myself. So I'm going to exclude my own team number. And if there's a team, for example, like I know that in this situation that uh, 78 is going to seed higher than me, I can take 78 off my pick list as well because I don't need a factor of team that's for sure going to seed higher than me into my own pick list. But rather than going through and uh, creating my do not pick list right now, I'm going to go back and start using one of the pick lists that I had previously created, and that is Newton pick list 2. And you'll notice that it's marked as incomplete, and that means that I've named the pick list, I have my do not pick list, but I haven't sorted the teams yet. So this is sort of the second stage of creating your pick list. And what it does is it begins to ask me, once I have my pick, once I have the teams that I want to include in my pick list, it begins to compare those teams for me. So you'll see at the bottom that it has a list of teams that it's already sort of ranked. And then at the top, it asks me to select between team 11 or team 25. And if there's no scouting data on those teams, it'll just show the OPR. And if, there's, um, if there is scouting data, it will show me a breakdown of each of the areas. Um, so for example, this is autonomous. Um, Teleop is right in the middle. And Minibot is uh, at the bottom here. And those are sort of like the three major things to include. Um, now, when you're actually having your scouting meeting, you could actually have someone looking at the data further rather than just relying on this quick summary, but this is just a, this is just sort of a, just to give you an idea of where these two teams lay. Um, so what it'll ask me to do is to pick between the two teams. So in this case, I'm going to select team 25. And when I select 25, it actually puts them down in the list down here ahead of 11 because I picked 25 over 11. Now the next option it wants to give me is, do I want to pick team 11 or do I want to pick 27? Uh, in this case, I'm going to pick 27. And so it puts, and then it wants to ask me, now that it runs into another question, do I want to pick team 25 or do I want to pick team 27? Well, in this case, I'm going to pick team 27. And you'll see now that it added 25 and 27 down to my pick list at the bottom. So now my pick list goes 16, 27, 25, and 11. And so it will continue to ask me these questions, and as it does, it'll sort my pick list for me. So usually it's going to probably ask you about, say, uh, let's say one question per team is I think the average that we figured it to be. So if you have uh, 30 teams on your pick list, then it's probably going to ask you about 30 questions to go through and sort them all. It's, you know, it, it, it's time consuming, but it helps you facilitate that conversation of, well, if given the option between these two teams, which team would I rather have? 
I'm not going to go through and and answer all these questions at the moment because um, I already have a pick list with a lot of the data available. So I'm going to go back to Newton and I'm going to open up a completed pick list and that is Newton pick list one. And so here's my completed pick list. This is what it looks like after I've answered all those questions. So it lists all the teams, 233 all the way down to my 29th team, which is 1511. And then it gives me some options at the bottom to add a team to my pick list, to make a copy, or to delete this pick list. Now, if after I'm done answering all these questions, I notice that, say, 27 seems really low on my pick list. And well, I can move 27 around. So I can move 27 ahead of 1730. I can move them ahead of 1538 or 1503. And I can begin moving teams around based on where I feel they should act, where I feel they actually belong. Now, say you end up Friday night and you're in your scouting meeting and you're looking at the way the rankings could break down and you notice that you could either be fifth or you could be twelfth. Well, what we give you the option to do is to create multiple pick lists based on different, different rankings that you could end up being. So I have this completed pick list, or we'll call it a completed pick list, or say it is. I can go and make a copy of this pick list and we'll call it Newton pick list three and it will make a copy of this pick list and I can add teams or I could take teams away so I can cross 233 off my list because I figure that if I end up being this 12th seed then you know 233 is out of the question 217 is probably out of the question and I can start taking teams I know are going to be ahead of me and cross them off my list already in addition, I can also add teams. So I can say, well, I want to add a team. Let's say I want to add 79. Well, it added 79 from my do not pick list into my pick list. And I can sort them wherever I feel I want them, depending on where I'm ranked. And it, every time I make a change to the pick list, it's actually saving the pick list. So there's no need to go, oops, I forgot to save it. It's automatically saving it. So Saturday afternoon comes around and it's time for line selections. Rather than having to go and pull up your pick list from Cow Scout and write it down on a piece of paper, you can actually use this as the list to give to your team's representative. So they can go out on the field, pull this up, and be able to look at the teams um, from, from the pick list that you've generated. Now, say that during line selections, 233 gets picked first. Well, you can actually say, hey, they've already been picked. So now it shows them as, hey, they've been picked. Don't pick them. So then say 148 gets picked. Well, they're off the list now too. And then say 217 gets picked. Well, they're off the list now too. And so as teams are getting picked, your representative can actually go and remove teams from the pick list. And so that way they know who's still available and who's not available.